Welcome to XYZ. In this tutorial, we will continue and create another audio visualizer, this time in a radial style. If you haven't watched part one of this tutorial series, please do so first. I will be moving through some node setup a lot faster since it will be very similar or the same as the visualizer in part one. Also check the video description for some useful resources. So let's get started. So this time we start out by adding a circle, curve circle, and we're gonna rename that. And this circle is going to be used to drive the size of the audio visualizer later on. And let's quickly head over to the video sequencer and load in our sound file. I'll be adjusting the volume so it doesn't blow out your eardrums in the recording. Let's head on to animation notes, create a new note tree. Let's also I'll get the timeline in here. And we're going to start again with the get from object note and get our uh, circle in here. We will be setting the node to single in the advanced node settings. And the next thing is a sound spectrum where we can load in the sound file. And this node needs again a time info node that will hook up to the frame. So it will generate values each frame anew. And I'm gonna adjust the amplitude to offset uh, that I had to to uh, adjust the volume. The next thing will be a spline evaluate node. We set that to range count. And we are going to create an integer to link up uh, the amount of points that both of these nodes generate and we're gonna set it to 20 for now and with that we can bring in a 3d viewer node and just look at the matrices that the evaluate spline generates this is already looking pretty good but i want to work with the C direction, so the Y and C axis should be switched. And we're going to achieve that by generating our uh, custom matrices and we're going to compose a matrix. And the location are the location of the points. And for the rotation, we are going to use a direction to rotation node. The view node out of, out of the way. And we're going to use the normals as the direction. And we are going to link the Euler rotation into the matrix rotation input. And leave all the rest unchanged. And with that, we can look again at the matrices. And now the C direction is pointing away from the circle exactly the way I wanted to. Before, it was the Y direction. And should we want the Y and X uh, axis to uh, switch, we can just do that in the direction to rotation node. But in this case, only the C direction is the important one.
So let's bring in our two offset matrix nodes. That will be our starting points and the end points that we will later on generate the spectrum splines out of. So we want to adjust the location. And we're going to need two vectors. And we're going to bring in a combined vector node. Let's duplicate that. And let's bring in the spectrum. For the endpoints, we can just reuse the spectrum right out of the gate. And for the starting points, we have to invert our spectrum again. And with that, I should adjust, but it will adjust globally on the C axis. And we don't want to do that. We want to offset it locally. And for that, the offset matrix node has an option to change the translation from global to local. And we're going to do that for both of these. And with that, it should adjust locally in the C direction. And now we cannot use these matrices or more the translation vectors as the end and start point. So we're going to decompose both of these matrices. And we're going to need another loop. And this will take in two vector lists. For the start and end points. Let's hook that up first. So we can head in the spline section and we want to do create from points. And this will need another vector list. So we generate a vector list out of our two points and link that in and we can make that a poly one and we're going to output a spline list and we are already know from the first part from the uh, linear audio visualizer that we are going to need another node the get length node because the spline length will later drive our rendering meshes, the C scale of these rendering meshes. So let's output the float list. And let's call that spline length. And we're going to get the loop out of the way and let's invoke it. And hook up the start and the end. And we generate a spline object. Going to rename this. And here we have our generated splines and they will already play. And we can uh, set up the bevel depth and pretty much again render these out if we want to. But 
those will be very square when viewed from the top but we want to round that off like I have in my initial scene so let's disable that and I'm going to bring in the same meshes we created in the first part of this tutorial series If you want to know how these were created, then please watch the first part. And let's position them by using three instancer nodes. So we have the center and the end and to start and we want to link up our integer value so we're creating the right amount of instances for every one of these and we're going to position them by using a matrix output node again And for our start and end points, we already have the matrices lined up. And for the center one, we're going to need another offset matrix node where we will adjust the scaling. And we're going to use the start matrices and the scaling will use the spline length value we generated in our loop and we're gonna need a vector but not a separate one but a combined one and let's drive the c value and x and y will be one Hook up the matrices and the scale should fit. Let's hide these meshes so they're not in the way and activate the deep copy on our instancers for our vertex colors that we are going to generate next. So for vertex colors, we need another loop as we had before. And we have three object list and another float list for our spectrum value. So this will be the spectrum, this will be start, end, and center. We use a set vertex color node. And we're gonna combine the color and use the spectrum as the red channel. And I'd like to bring in a map range node again so we can adjust the mapping if we need to. So let's bring that loop out of the way. 
and we're gonna invoke it and link up the lists and let's not forget the spectrum and with that it should already blend our two colors again what i'd like to do again is uh, change our uh, our visualizer on a global scale so we're going to use more offset matrix nodes and offset these matrices and the scale for them so this will be zero and we're gonna bring in an invert fall off to link up all the fall offs on this so we can scale all these meshes together let's duplicate that link up the fall off and we're gonna need one more and on this we adjust only the x and the y scale but not the c scale and with that we have one value that can scale and fade in and fade out the visualizer So this is pretty much it for this tutorial. And now we can just uh, scale our circle and the visualizer will always follow. But the cool part is we can even adjust the spline on upper vertex basis and scale, for instance just this point and we end up not with a round visualizer but one that can have any shape you want we can even offset that make elliptical ones and the cool part of uh, this new node set up with a few uh, different nodes is that we can also bring in a Bezier curve and just switch to it instead of the circle and we end up with another linear visualizer we can just adjust the points and set uh, the spline type to polygon and this is pretty much the same as we had in the first part. We can also just adjust the length of this and the visualizer will always follow. And of course we can set it back to a Bezier curve. And we can rotate the handles and end up with something really interesting we can also adjust the tilt of every point and this one will uh, change how how the uh, single points are rotated on the spline so we can have a visualizer that just rotates through the scene. So I hope you found this helpful. And I will see you in the next tutorial. No, there ain't no stopping us. Blow it out, boarding pass. Couldn't catch me, I'd be moving fast Call me a shooting star